Come on in, folks. Yeah, it's 3 o'clock, 3.03 on a Wednesday. The sun is shining, but it's still a little cool out. Robert is so sore, y'all. He is so sore. He has... He and Justin cut down a tree last week, and they cut it kind of high, so it left a big, you know, like a four-foot stump. And they, Robert knew there's a lot of wood in that stump. And so he took his chainsaw. He had chainsaw trouble, and he had to work on his chainsaw and got it going. And so he decided to cut down through the stump halfway in the middle and then cut through because the stump was really too big for him to cut all the way through. I don't know how they did it. They had two chainsaws going, I guess. Anyway, he cut one half of it a couple of days ago, got that out of there, got it cut up into two hunks and then split it. And then he took and did the other side yesterday. He's just determined. His determination is amazing. Anyway, that poor Robert. Y'all say a prayer for Robert. He just, he just, I think he's downstairs taking a nap right now, which there could be a nap in my future. Sometimes we just need to slow down. That's what tea time is all about. I didn't bring my tea in here. Sometimes we just need to slow the wheels down, quit bouncing off everything, and just slow down. And occasionally, well, a lot of the times, I just let stuff play on YouTube, especially in the shorts, and you have to just scroll past and scroll past. Well, last night I was watching... I was working, but I was also listening, and I heard this young girl, and she was describing creation, and it made me think of something that happened when I was 13, maybe 14 years old. It was powerful. In fact, I dare say it changed my life from that point forward. And we had a chaotic household. Four girls growing up with one bathroom. And and I always loved to watch... Watch space launches and different things. I remember being at Girl Scout camp and standing around a fire and we had a flag burning ceremony, but we were out in the middle of nowhere on Kentucky Lake. And I remember standing there and and this ceremony lasted it seemed like hours, and I fainted. It was the first time I ever, well, it wasn't the first time I ever fainted, but I fainted, and I had to be taken to the nurse's station, and it was, um, I'm thinking of something else that happened with that nurse and our family, but that's another story. But the nurse, the nurse's name at camp was Little Dipper. And, and uh, they brought the flag and, that had been burned ceremonially because you have to cut out the stripes, each stripe, and you lay that in the fire on this screen, and then you cut out the field of stars. And they brought that to the nurse's station and they were going to pick it up with some tongs and put it in a box and 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 bury it underneath the flagpole and little dipper is 
is trying to show me the stars and how to find the constellations and different things. So it was just a beautiful night sky, just open and just, just beautiful. And that reminded me of this night, I don't know, 13, 14 years old, that I curled up in a blanket, went outside with a lawn chair, one of those chase lounges, and curled up in it looking up at the sky. Just looking up at the sky. And I'm just pondering the questions of a 13, 14 year old. You know, I've been in church my whole life and I never could figure out how God could be everywhere all the time, just everywhere and all the time. So last night I'm listening to this young teenage girl talk about the creation that when God made the earth from, you know, separated the waters from the dry ground. And then he was going to create the fish. And I've got to go back and reread that. And I challenge you to re read Genesis. But when he made the fishes and the animals in the sea, he spoke to the sea. And when he made the plants and the trees, he spoke to the earth. And when he made mankind, he spoke to himself. Now, I got to verify that. But her conclusion in this little video was that if God is not in us and we are not in God, that we are nothing. We, we just lose our zest for life if we are not in Him. And that made me remember laying out in that lawn chair, looking up at the stars and imagining all those stars. And I remembered God telling Abraham that your descendants will be as the stars in the heaven. And then while I'm laying there, wrapped up in that blankie, The Holy Spirit just hugs me. I mean, I felt so comforted thinking about this question. How could God be everywhere? And it hit me that as the stars in the sky have things traveling around them and, and our solar system has a sun, like a nucleus in a cell, and the planets go around, go around a sun. It's all based on a structure, a similar structure of atoms and molecules and a nucleus, and that every atom that is in us is part of God. Every atom, we are part of God. And I never talked about that with anybody. Never told another soul until mine and Robert's very first date. And I told Robert, we were sitting on our side porch and everything fits together, y'all. It was his side porch. It wasn't my side porch. It was his side porch. And he opened up a card table. And I cooked a, just 
a simple meal of fettuccine. And we had dinner on the side porch right where our kitchen sink is right now. (laughs) How prophetic is that? We sat there at that card table and we had a lovely meal and we had scallops and shrimp and fettuccine alfredo and it was just a pleasant meal he robert didn't even have things to cook it in i had to cook spaghetti and i mean fettuccine in a pot that i wasn't used didn't have a pot and i told robert about that vision told Robert about the epiphany that that God had put on me as a little kid, 13, 14 years old. I was in my 40s, and I had never told another soul. I don't know if if I thought people would not understand it or... I don't know. And after that date was over with, I told my sister Patty that I was going to marry Robert Silly and that we were going to spend the rest of our lives together. It's been 27 years. Seems just like yesterday. We're not the only ones that feel that way when you have a wonderful relationship with somebody. Jason and Brooke at Cog Hill, they've been married, I think, a lot of years too, 15 or 20, and they just can't get over it. It just seems like yesterday, just like yesterday. You know, time flies when you're having fun. I look at my... I have a notepad that I write down our Ask Fly Lady questions on every day and our an, another page for the morning musing. And I look at it and I'm already headed toward Thursday of a two-week cycle. Time just flies, y'all. Imagine being God I know we can't imagine that because he's in a he he doesn't think like we do. He can just dip his finger down into the stream of time. And he knows the beginning from the end. He knows it all. And he wins. But sometimes he tells us things that comfort us. It comforts us knowing we don't know. We don't we don't know everything. But you know we can ask God for wisdom. And discernment. And he will tell us. He will tell us. We just have to ask. Little kid. Curled up. In a blanket. Only. uh, And it was cold out. It wasn't. it, It was like it was winter time. And I'm looking up at the stars. I think I slept out there that night. And then I told Robert about it. 30 something years later. So y'all. We got to slow down. 
we got to stop trying to fix everything and fix everybody because we're control freaks. That's our perfectionism. It's another layer of our perfectionism. We can't fix everything. We can't fix it all. But you know, we can slow down and we can feel the love of our Father for us. And we can ask Him for wisdom. You know, Solomon did that. He asked for wisdom. And he had to he had to decide which which woman was the mother of the baby, the real mother. He said, Well, cut the baby in half and give them each a half. Well, that would have killed the baby. But the mother, the real mother, said, You let her have it. At least the baby will be alive. You just let her have it. And that's Solomon knew. Solomon knew. Wisdom, wisdom is much more than IQ or intelligence. Wisdom is leaning on the Lord. It's leaning on the Lord for Him, for the Holy Spirit to guide you. Wisdom. Just ask for wisdom. Ask for wisdom. I bet if you think back into your childhood, many prophetic people, and I'm not saying I'm prophetic at all, but many prophetic people had have have been like Amanda Grace. She used to tell her daddy things that she would see. And he would just say, you're just making this stuff up. She didn't have the whereabouts to make stuff up. There's several other people that were given things as little children. One of them was sitting in church at seven years old. Seven years old, that pure heart of a seven-year-old. Y'all keep um, Mark Lowry in your prayers. He had to have some uh, PET scan done this week. They thought he had a heart attack. I don't know the details on it, but just keep Mark in your prayers. Last night before I went to bed, I was listening to the Gaither, just letting letting a, a playlist just flow. And so many of those old gospel singers have gone on to the, the choir in the sky. Oh, thank you, AJ. Got a good health report. So I know Bill and Gloria Gaither, um, she had surgery on her hip and they messed something up and she can't stand anymore. You got to love doctors. <laughs> Y'all pray for my granddaughter. She has her wisdom teeth removed tomorrow. I was giving Justin a list of things to get at the grocery store from Jello to pudding and mashed potatoes. And I think Emily made some sweet mashed sweet potatoes and some parsnips last night. My grandchild loves parsnips, <laughs> mashed parsnips. So keep Sarah in your prayers. I think she's wise not to be put to sleep. I, I can't be put to sleep. I can't do that. That's why I had a virtual colonoscopy. My neighbor's shooting a gun.
Y'all, take some time to slow down today. You'll be glad you did. Because running around like a chicken with its head cut off is not good for you. Not good. So folks, be good, kind, and sweet. Be good to yourself by slowing down. Sometimes we can get some stuff going in the crock pot and that'll give us some time. I was listening to a fellow a while ago and he'd been on a submarine for two years during the Vietnam War. And he didn't know what it was like to sleep. He would sleep about 20 minutes over a seven-day period. I can't imagine that. He came up with ways to stay awake. We're praying for you, Rosalind. Justin talked to Jack today. He was feeling stronger. This is good. And they may be able, they have scheduled the reversal on the, I don't know what it's called when they put that bag in so he can heal. Um, April 15th. It's just three weeks away, y'all. A little over three weeks away. How wonderful is that? April 15th. God gets all the glory, y'all. He gets all the glory. <laughs> hey, Hope, write that down and put it in your happiness file. A colostomy. Yeah, that's it. Put that in your happiness file, what's your granddaughter, and date it. Date it. I love my, that little, that little hand back there, it reminds me of Psalms 91. Under the wings, take refuge. I put my prayer requests that have been answered in there. Anyway, folks. Be good, kind, and sweet. Be good to yourself by taking a break. Be kind to others by stopping talking. Just don't talk for an hour. And let that joy that is right here in your heart, that is one of those cells of God, we are God. God is us. We're all one under this heavenly Father. So y'all be good, kind, and sweet. I got a little kitty in here. She's bathing in a sunbeam. And she's so happy. Y'all say a prayer for Nino. He may have to put his dog down today. That dog's been a part of his life for 11 years. And he's been sober for four of them. I'll see y'all tomorrow. It's question and answer day. I'm sure my sister's already sent me those questions. So get your questions in every week. And she'll send them to us. Anyway, I love you all. God gets all the glory. All of it. So slow down. Bye.